continuing on our adventure into masking. So, uh, where we uh, left off last week, we used uh, brush tools to manually create masks, okay, from scratch. When you create a mask with nothing selected, it's just going to create what we call an empty mask, which means that everything remains revealed. So, now we're going to get more advanced with our masks. We're going to use some selection tools to do the majority of the work of producing the mask for us so that hopefully when we click that mask button we are done so what we did with last week with the brush tools we made the mask and then or we made that the empty mask and then we went in with the brush and filled it in with this you're gonna select something and then when you press the mask button you should be pretty much done obviously you may need to touch it up at times but the point with the selection masking is that it should be done when you're once you have your selection made now first rule of selection club is to deselect so command d d as in deselect will clear a selection when you have one so if you mess up your selection just command d clear it out restart now the most basic way of creating a selection are our marquee tools and the marquee tools keyboard shortcut is m and you'll notice that I have Shift M and Shift L, and you'll see Shift W down here listed as uh, keyboard shortcuts for these. Shift allows you to cycle through the different types of uh, tools that share a uh, style, let's say, or type of tool, so marquee tools. So we have the rectangular marquee tool, which makes a rectangle selection, and the elliptical marquee tool, which creates an oval-shaped selection. So I'll go ahead and bring in my guy here. And I'll make a new document. It's a big boy picture. It's 3,000 pixels. So, all right, I got Jim Carrey here. If I take the uh, rectangle marquee tool and make a selection box, if I click this, you'll see that it makes a mask of only the area inside of that rectangle. I can also make a oval one. Now if I hold shift while I'm using this selection tool, it will, whoops, it'll scale proportionally so it'll stay in a circle shape as opposed to an oval. So I could do something like this and mask and now I have this circle area of his face. And so I'll just clear my selection there with command D. So that is the most basic way of creating the selections. Using the marquee tools, you can create a shaped selection of an oval or a rectangle. So obviously squares or circles. So slightly more manual than that, or uh, more controlled than that, I should say, are our lasso tools. So there are three types of lasso tools that you can use. The main lasso tool, which is hand drawing a selection not super useful I mean it, it has its uses polygonal lasso tools which creates a connect the dots selection basically you just click and place points and it'll connect all the way back and at the end it will make a shape that is your selection and then finally is the magnetic lasso tool which will algorithmically track and trace what you are uh, selecting based on the, the pixels underneath it. So we'll try and help you out and figure out what your selection should be. So if I go back here, I have my lasso tools are right underneath my selection tools here. So my main lasso tool, which like I said is fully free form, you click and drag, it makes a selection. If I mask it, that's what it would look like. So command Z, command D to get rid of my selection. So shift L to switch to my next lasso tool, which is the polygonal lasso. And like I said, this one is connect the dots. You just keep placing points until you eventually click back to the point where you started. Creates a lasso. Okay, so there's another method of selecting using the polygonal lasso. Here's the one I think you guys are going to like, okay? 
So again, it is not always going to be perfect, but the magnetic lasso allows you to just sort of drag the mouse in. As long as you're relatively on track, Photoshop will figure it out. So I'm going to start here at Jim Carrey's uh, shoulder here. And I'm dragging this along. And it's just figuring out, hey, I think he's trying to track Oh, so you can also click to manually create a, a point on the magnetic lasso. So it's just tracking, tracking. It's See, it's getting some of the blue in the background, which is fine. Now, I'm going to click here. And I'm clicking and dragging and just going straight across the top as best I can. It is actually sort of screwing up along the top. It's fine. We'll go back and fix it later. Which is why I teach you guys how to make your uh, shells manually or your masks manually first. So again, just dragging it along. Thanks, Sid. Dragging it along. So I'll put a, one in the corner. I'm holding space bar to use the hand tool to move over while I'm in the middle of my lasso. And then I'm just continuing, continuing. Boom, 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 boom. So again, I'm clicking and holding, dragging across the bottom now. And it's, again, screwing up a little bit. Use the hand tool, pan over, and then up and connect. And there we have it. So there is my selection of Jim Carrey. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a mask of that. Now you can see the parts where along the edge it's screwed up. Not a problem. Just take my brush. I'm going to take white. Make sure I'm selected on my mask. And I'm just going to paint white in. Whoops. Okay, a little too much. I got to remember where the end of that is. So again, I'm just fixing the parts that it screwed up there, over here, against the edge, and then over here, and then up there. All right. All right, and over to there. Okay, and that's it. Also though, oh, one other thing before I forget. So I'll switch to black here. I just need to fix up this little bit of his ear that got caught there. And there we go. Decent enough mask. Oh, a little bit more over here. Okay, cool. So, those are our lasso tools. So, the magnetic lasso tool is quite a workhorse. Um, as long as you take it slow and steady. So, I, did, I was sort of zoomed out there. But I encourage you when you're using the magnetic lasso... You don't need to be crazy close, but if you're zoomed in quite a bit, you can just drag your lasso as best you can along this. That way, when your selection's done with the lasso, you pretty much got the whole thing done. And then that will bring you to our wand tools. So the wand tool, there's two types of wands, the quick select wand and the magic wand. And... Basically, the quick select wand works similar to a brush, and the magic wand is something you just sort of click. So let me show you the quick select wand first. So W for your wand tools, who would have guessed? And I'm going to go ahead and bring in our second shot. So I'll do this one on Mr. Krabs. Now, if I take my quick select wand here, Oh, they added a new one. Object selection tool. It's probably garbage. I'm not going to use it. So quick selection wand. If I click and drag out here, you'll see how it's sort of, it's starting to grab the sky. It figured out based on the fact that I went over all the different shades of blue in the sky. Hey, he probably wants all the blues of the sky selected. I'm holding shift to add to my selection. I add the ground. And then I'm going to shift and add over here the sky on this side. 
add the sky in between his eyes. Grab this underneath his arm here, inside the claw here. Am I missing anything? Oh, so one thing that did happen though is that it did select the eye here. So I'm gonna hold Alt to deselect. That's something I need to put on these notes for selection is Alt and Shift. Shift will add to your uh, selection and Alt will subtract while you're holding it. Those settings are also found up here manually. Um, so anyway, I got the whole sky selected. Did I select his claw? No, no, I selected everything but that. Because see, when I mask this, now everything stays except for Mr. Krabs. Because, and again, this is uh, something I'll point out here at the bottom of the notes. So, quick thing about that. I didn't do anything wrong. The selection to mask conversion leaves whatever you selected. So, it leaves the area inside the selection revealed. So, because I selected everything except Mr. Krabs, it left everything except Mr. Krabs revealed. Now, over here in the proper, if you have the properties up, which you generally will have proper the properties up, there's a button for invert here. You can just invert it. There it is. So, again, you can just hit this invert button. Or if you just select the mask, you can manually do it with command I, I as in invert. So you'll notice that all that's left here, this area inside the mask, so I'm gonna use, or inside the claw, so I'm gonna use the magic wand tool and just click in there and shift and click in there. Now, this, this wand tool is intolerant, okay? It is not woke enough for us. Um, it said some problematic things on Twitter, and we need to correct it. So there is this thing called tolerance up here at the top. This is a measure of how sensitive the tool will be to picking up colors that are similar to the, the pixel that you clicked on that are next to it. So if I make this 50 tolerance, so I'll zoom back out. I'm gonna command D, deselect, click in here again, and it's selected more of this area in here. And if I click in here, it'll select more of that. So I'm gonna make this like 80 tolerance. Let's do it again. Okay, that one looks better. That one looks better, okay, cool. So I can't, however, just make a new mask with that. That does not work. Instead, I just go to my mask I already have, take my brush, make sure I'm selected on the mask, because I wasn't. And so because I want to hide these areas inside this selection, I have my brush set to black, paint inside the selection, boom, boom, boom. Now that part is masked out, masked out as well. And so that will leave me with Mr. Krabs and his one true love money. All right, so final notes here. So making selections with masking, so this should get you the the point of this is that the masking with selection shouldn't get you a hundred percent of the way there i mean for this assignment it probably will it should get you 95 percent of the way there and then you're just finishing up the last bits with your brush so what you'll do is you'll create a selection double check that you got the right layer selected in the layers panel because that is an easy mistake to make and then you at click the mask icon and that will take your selection and convert it to a mask. So again, keep in mind that the things that um, will be remain revealed in your mask are the things that were within the selection area, okay? So that's the assignment. You're gonna take these two pictures when I post them here in a second. You're gonna go ahead and add them uh, to Photoshop, bring them in, Use a selection tool of your choice, either the magnetic lasso or the magic wand or the quick select tool, and you're gonna create a mask that leaves just Jim Carrey and just Mr. Krabs. Okay? So that's it. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.